Okay, I'm rolling. Okay. Hello. <laughs> I'm Alex. What were you just saying? Uh, no. You're not going to tell them that you don't have anything interesting to say? Yeah, I, I got fuck all, really. Unless y'all want to call to arms against the right. Like. Coming out the gate strong. I got nothing for you. Okay. You want to introduce yourself for the, for the viewing public? I think I already did, but I'm Alex, and I'm his son, and that answers the second question he was going to ask me, so... No, it doesn't. The second question is, how long have you known me? How do you know me? Well, I know you because I'm your son. Right, got that part, son. so it partially answers the question. Uh, I am I have been alive for 21 years, and he has been my father for all of them. <laughs> <laughs> is it only 21 years? And some change. I mean, this is May... Yeah. This is actually, what, May 18th? Yeah. So, 20, 21 and some math. Exactly a quarter. Yeah. But, I mean, you were born on February tw February 18th. Yeah. So, when you know today is May 18th, that's three months later. Yeah, I forgot which <laughs> fucking month of the year May was, what order that came in. Uh-huh. So, the third question is... Um, Anything you want to say in response to the trip? You're aware of the trip that I'm on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're here in Vancouver, Washington because of it. So, yeah, I understand there is a trip going on. But I feel like the people who are going to watch this one have watched the last one I was in where I did react to the trip. So, so your reactions to the trip are the <laughs> exact same? Pretty much. Because yeah. I have stuff I can talk about. I have stuff I can bring up. Okay. How much of the, vid of the videos I've posted have you watched? Uh, not all of them by a long shot. Okay. I have watched the ones about areas I am interested in. I've watched all of the Char Charlize Theron? Theron? Theron. Theron. <laughs> all of those, just because that's funny. And I've watched all of the stand-up bits. Okay. For sure. And do you want to say anything to Charlize about dating me? Uh, no, not really. Do you think she should date me? I, I don't know, man. I don't know enough about her as a person. That's a no, she shouldn't date you, but I don't want to say that. Is that it how I should take that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Actually, that's all helpful information. The fact that you're <laughs> watching the videos related to places that interest you. Yeah. That's helpful inter information. Is, is it really? Have you, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, any, any quote unquote view, I assume nobody's watching. Okay. So any quote-unquote viewer feedback that tells me what makes people watch. Well, if you'd like more specifically, I've watched most of the ones in Nevada. Okay. And then, uh, obviously, the ones I said before. Does that um, mean you want to go to Vegas? Uh, only because Fallout New Vegas. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I am not interested in the gambling and sexes available in, in Vegas. <laughs> It's not <laughs> the gambling and sexes available. In Vegas. <laughs> yeah, I guess I, I don't I don't understand what that means either. You interpret, viewer. How about you have a field day with that? <laughs> Good call. Um, <laughs> so I should take you on the road, and we should do dual stand up together. I, I mean, I guess I feel like we would ha like we could do a podcast together fairly easily. I think if I was on stage telling a story and you were able to just comment as you saw fit, <laughs> it would work. Just chip in. Yeah. All right. It would, it would work pretty well, probably. So you I want would be structured. I would be just stoned out of my mind. You're assuming I would be structured. You'd be more structured than me. Yeah, You'd right. have a plan going into it. I know you. Actually, I mean, the way I've been doing it lately is really just go on stage with a premise and then riff on the premise instead okay. of overriding it. Okay. So the last one I did, the one on uh, Charlize yeah. Theron, was essentially just, okay, I've got some ideas... Uh, but it's mostly just retelling. This. There's even ideas I left out yeah. that had come up during the day. Okay. Well, I don't know, man. It, it would be fun, sure. Um, have you watched any of the videos I posted on anxiety? I have not, no. Okay. I saw the first, like, 30 seconds of one of them, and then my break was over and people were yelling at me, so I had to go back <laughs> inside. That is the joy of being a... Uh, Young worker in the American economy. A.K.A. wage slave. Yeah. Would you rather talk about wage slavery or would you rather talk about anxiety? 
I'd rather be out there with a hatchet collecting Nazi scouts. No, we're not going to talk about that. That's... <laughs> Unless you want to have the argument about how violence is not the answer. I'm good. No thanks. We went through it. We don't need to film it. Okay, so we've talked extensively about whether or not America has to come to bloodshed at this point, or whether or not this... I'm on the bloodshed side. And uh, I'm on which side? The non... not so much. I mean, just show them your shirt, your Batman right now, come on. Yeah, see? And how, what is that? Bat, Batman don't kill. There's no blood. Batman don't kill, that's, kill that's, but that's violence what? is definitely a part of Batman's okay. milieu. Sure, but he doesn't murder people and take their scalps, is my point. This is true. So, <laughs> you, you're more of a Spider-Man person? <laughs> yes, as you can tell from my book. Good lord, put that thing down. <laughs> you open At the least door. let me pretend I'm fatherly and a decent parent. Hey, I am above age. It is legal in the state I'm in, so <laughs> anybody who disagrees with that, fight me. I'm good. I had a fairly significant anxiety attack yesterday. Yes. Do you want to talk about it at all? I mean, not really. Okay. It's more embarrassing for me than anything else. That's okay. Like, See, I'm tempted. I want to talk about... Well, you can shoot a video talking about it later by yourself. By myself. Fine. Okay. I'm good. All right. I'm just wondering if it would help me deal with that anxiety to talk a little bit about its impact on y'all. It might, but... But we're not going to do that? I mean, it's up to you. Well, I mean, I brought it up. <clears throat> well, then, what's your first question, interviewer? Let's go. Um, a friend of mine said, and I think you might have watched this one. I mean, we can even talk about role playing games if you wanted to. A friend of mine said that your forties are about cleaning house, and cleaning house for me is about letting go of a lot of the shit. Yeah. And you and I have talked about PTSD, mm. and I've got at least three major situations, probably more like five or six, mm. that could contribute to their own form of PTSD. Um, yep. And that's what results in the anxiety like I had yesterday. Yep. So, I mean, should I describe? Sure. Or would you rather... No, you, you don't want to talk about this. And if you have me talk about it, I'll be vague because I don't hold on to the particulars of situations like that, even when it's first person. Okay. So. so I got frustrated with Airbnb, Norwegian Cruise Lines, and McDonald's all in the same day, all over bad customer service. I was only present for the McDonald's. Right. Um, well, I, I saw the tail end of Airbnb today. Right. Because I was on the situation. phone. Yeah, but today was actually decent. Yeah. The case manager solved it. Mm -hmm. I mean, reasonably. Yeah. Not great, but reasonably. Good enough. I think uh, my thing with customer service comes back to my time with Hollywood Video. Mm -hmm. And how draconian they were about good service. And the additional stress I was going through at the time. Yeah. I don't know where to go with that. How, do, how does how does your work stress work? How does that happen? Uh, I get overloaded, um, but I'm autistic, so that happens differently. Um, but I get overwhelmed, and I start snapping at people until I get to go away. Because uh, that's my strategy for dealing with anything, is I fucking excuse myself from the situation. Okay. And, you know, the bong. I was gonna grab it, but I got caught in the chair. Yeah, here it is, Spidey Bong. <laughs> um, Does whatever Spidey Bong can. Yeah, get you high. Yeah, yeah, I'll take your word for it. Pretty much it. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't deal with customer service all that much. Okay. Um, because I get angry with the customer. There is no leeway whatsoever. You came to a busy Taco Bell and ordered several twelve packs. Man, it's on you that we're slow. Like, you don't get to yell at me because your food's taking a while when you saw the crowd when you walked in. Okay. <clears throat> and that's, I mean, 
basically it. What's your opinion on uh, minimum wage? Uh, it should be much higher, and I feel like everybody who's like, oh, but we pay other people that little. Well, maybe we should pay them more. Pay everybody more. Where's that money come from? I mean... Are you trying to get me to diagnose the systemic issues in our country? Because I'd rather not. That's what we enjoy talking about. Yeah, but I'm, I'm a little high at trying to decompress from all the dumbass Republicans I argued with. Oh, there he is. Sorry, Republican. I'm not. <laughs> Anytime somebody calls out like a community and says, oh, I don't like Texas, I apologize to that community. Sorry, Texas. Okay. Know, so. Well, I unapologized for right. so. The views expressed by Alex Long are not necessarily those of those recording the video. <laughs> however you want to put it. Yeah, something like that. Okay. It's close enough. I think that's a legal disclaimer. Fair enough. I mean, it's a little late, but... Well, no, it, I mean, it's halfway through. It's fine. Sure. It still counts. This is halfway? Uh, we're, not, we're not almost done yet? <laughs> well, it depends. I mean, all <laughs> these depend on how far they go. How long do you think we've been talking? I don't know. Take right. a guess. I can go... Somewhere between five and ten minutes. Eleven fifteen. Okay, so I'm a little off. And I've had some that have gone thirty minutes. Mm -hmm. And I've had some that have gone three or four. Yeah, yeah, I was in one of those. <laughs> yeah, we but that walked was... to or from that that convenience store, yeah. and and that was it. But I mean, that one was a quick joke on the way back to the tattoo parlor. Yeah. So it didn't really count as what we're doing now. That's fair. Um. I did the first one in the role-playing series, because you said you were interested in them. Tag me in that. I don't think I saw it. Okay. It was uh, Origins and me playing d d in second grade. Cool. On my first ever role-playing character. Dope. Do you want to do chapter two right now and talk about it? I mean, shit, sure. Okay. Yeah. So this is Am mostly going to be... in it? Like... Well, I mean... <sighs> How far does chapter two go? How, like, how many chapters are you doing? I don't know. It depends on how the story breaks down. Okay. Because the next phase, uh, and most most of these where I'm talking about myself, I'm usually shooting myself. So we're doing a video of you yeah, talking about me. So you kind of have to ask questions okay. or um, do the reaction. So, so what did you cover in the first video since I haven't seen you? Uh, first one covered uh, what I just said. It was yeah. my my beginning. I started playing D and D in second grade. Okay. So Talked about my first character. Okay. Uh, and how I didn't really know how it worked. Okay. But I mean, I was there, and I had one of the not the mail out set, but the first box set of D and D that had one blue book, one red book. Okay. So what's next? The next chapter would be jumping forward to junior high. Okay. And in junior high. Um, I remember seeing uh, the first issue of Amazing Spider-Man with the black and white suit. Okay. The symbiote. The one so that later that be, becomes Venom. That would be what? Secret Wars? Right? No, no, no. Um, I hadn't seen Secret Wars yet. Secret Wars is the next step in this story. Oh, okay. Because I was at, there was, a, there was a convenience store near my junior high, which was Thompson, which we used to be the Tyrolians, which is a mountain climber. Okay. And they changed it to Timberwolves. You know, that makes that makes sense. I, I don't know what the fuck a Tyrolean is. Uh, neither did we. Yeah. Nobody that went to Thompson knew what a Tyrolean was, yeah. especially not in junior high. Yeah. But at the, the comic book display at the corner, I saw Spider-Man in a black and white suit. Okay. And since Spider-Man was my first comic book and he'd always been red and blue, and we're talking about 20 years of Spider-Man before you introduced this, mm -hmm. I was like, what's that? And that's how I picked up Secret Wars. Because um, Secret Wars, what happened was they went from one issue to the next issue, like they do every month. That was dumb. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, 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 all of a sudden, comic books. Gotcha. at the end of one, and I wish I knew the numbers. I want to say it's like 257, 258, but I know that's slightly off. At the end of one, Spider-Man gets kidnapped into space through, through a portal. Okay. And at the beginning of the next one, he comes out of the portal. Gotcha. So you had a one-month gap uh, where everybody returns from Secret Wars yeah. with the effects of what happened in Secret Wars, but you haven't read Secret Wars yet because it hasn't – only issue one has come out. Gotcha. So when you see that Spider-Man gets a new suit that's black and white, you don't know how it happens. You have to buy Secret Wars to see that story. Gotcha. And the actual story is actually really underwhelming. 
Really? Yeah, the real story is that... Uh, I've, I've heard it built up, but I've never read it myself. Many of the v- heroes had their costumes shredded in battle. Uh, and so they're in this... It's like a fortress kind of thing, a base that has a lot of alien technology. Yeah. And somebody had, I, I want to say it was Thor's helmet, for example. Thor lost his helmet. I, it might not have been. Thor comes back and has a helmet, and Spider-Man goes, Hey, where'd you get the helmet, Thor? And Thor goes, There's a machine in there that'll duplicate your costume for you. Mm. And so Spider-Man goes in there, and even though he's a genius scientist, he can't figure out which machine is the one that makes clothing. So he goes, this one looks like it makes clothing. And he's wearing a shredded red and blue suit. And he sits down in it and thinks about clothing. And he gets this ball of black goop that then, that then flows up his arm. Well, we didn't know it was a symbiote at the time. We wouldn't know that for a couple of years. Yeah. But apparently Peter Parker mistook an alien prison for the clothing machine. I'm fucking kidding, really? Because they were in the same room. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that's how he got the suit. So it just got... Wait, why isn't there a seat in the alien prison? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was wonderful. I mean, the whole series is bizarre. Anyway, th- this is about... This is where Hulk holds up a mountain. As a matter of fact, there's a moment in Endgame that yeah. that seemed like it was a reference to that moment of Secret Wars. And I think Hulk had Banner's mind at that point, too. He wasn't Professor Hulk yet, yeah. but he wasn't... Hulk smash Hulk either. Yeah, he was... But I, if I remember right. Okay. Yeah, um, and so that intrigued me. I picked up Secret Wars, and that got me back into comics. Okay. Okay? Which then the next step was the Marvel Super Heroes role-playing game. Yeah. Because a friend of mine had it. I've, I've read that comic you wrote up using City of Heroes. Oh, yeah, I did do that, didn't I? Uh That had some pictures of me run through a Photoshop filter. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I wonder if I've still got that somewhere. Last I saw it, it was hanging up on your little cork board. uh, Well, we haven't gotten to that character yet. Okay. Because I started being interested in Marvel superheroes in junior high, but I didn't have a role-playing group in junior high. I found theater in junior high because I was in choir, and the choir teacher wanted to do a musical. Okay. Um, and so we did a musical, and that got me into acting. Gotcha. And so um, freshman year of high school, I took theater and tech. All right. And because I switched from choir to tech, because they were taught by the same guy, oddly okay. enough. Okay. Um, and at the end of my freshman, during my freshman year, I was working tech on the productions. Mm-hmm. And on working tech on the productions, I met the group of my a group of friends I ended up role playing with. Yeah. So fall semester, it was a show called Zorro's Back in Town, and my job was to throw shit through the door. Anytime the door opened, it was supposed to be wind through the town, and the wind carried the stupid props. Like, one time I was throwing money through the door, and one time I was throwing confetti and tumbleweeds, and that was my job on that show. Then at the end of the year, we did Bye Bye Birdie, and I worked Follow Spot on that. But I was always back... Follow Spot? Spotlight? Oh, okay, yeah. Gotcha. Person on Spotlight makes, yeah. it follows the person on stage. Okay. And on those shows, I met the friend group I ended up role-playing with. Yeah, you said that. That's how we met. Okay. And we played just about everything. Except we mostly came back to Marvel superheroes. Mm-hmm. And this has mostly been me talking and you nodding, so... Pretty much. Um, is there anything you want to know... You know, you said you played Gamma World. I want to know how much and, like, if any of it was good. Like, if you had fun with it, how long. Like, um, cause I've been intrigued by that system for a while, or at least the setting. Well, Gamma World was one of the TSR games. I don't know what that means. Well, TSR made D&D. Oh, okay. And, and TSR... Wizards of Flight? Well, there's a chain here. Wizards of the Coast does not exist until magic is invented in the 90s. Oh. And then Wizards of the Coast picks up market share by buying other companies in the fantasy genre. Gotcha. Well, at the time, TSR, um, and I wish I remembered what it stood for. I'm sh- I, I know I know it, but I can't pull it up. Um, TSR tried to diversify into creating different worlds mm. uh, and creating different games. Okay. So you see D&D's original world was Greyhawk. 
mm-hmm. and they diversify into Forgotten Realms and and a bunch of different D and D settings. Dragonlance is one of them. The one I know is Faerun. Okay, I don't even know that one. That's the one Adventure Zone set it. Shout out Adventure Zone. It's got oh, yeah, yeah. You're several editions of D&D later, though. Yeah. We're talking about Advanced D&D. Okay. We didn't know anything about and the later advanced stuff. Advanced D&D becomes Pathfinder, right? Maybe. Okay. Because I'm not that in touch with D&D anymore. I have heard somebody go, I played Pathfinder since it was Advanced D&D, so I know the rules. Okay, uh, I'll, rules. I'll take your word for it. I don't know. But, I mean, D&D, I mean, back in the day, your mages were squishy. Yeah. Your mage started with four hit points or less. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Your your hit die was four. Fuck. So each level you got one to four hit points and that's it. Whereas a fighter gets ten to twelve. Yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't and so all body. classes... Well, I mean, it was their trade-off for how powerful mage spells could be. Yeah. But even at level but one... you fucking sneeze at them wrong and they're dead. Right. And that's how we got used to them. So D and D tried to make a lot, TSR tried to make a bunch of money by doing different D and D settings, but they also did Star Frontiers, okay. which was a science fiction game, yeah. and Gamma World, which is a post apocalyptic game. And yes. I'm sure there were others, but I can't remember them right now. We tried everything. Okay. Star Frontiers we didn't care for. Mm-hmm. We played a sci fi game called Traveler, and our Traveler game was essentially a parody of Star Wars. Nice. Yeah, my uh, my you ever see Hardware Wars? I think I've shown it to you. It doesn't ring a bell. It's a short film that mocks uh, Star Wars with like ham, ham salad instead of Han Solo and Chewbacca the Wookiee mon- the Cookie Monster. I don't think I've seen that. And Chewbacca's a hand puppet. You haven't seen it? Mm-hmm. And it, uh, the hand puppet at one point bites Princess Leia's braids because he thinks it's a cinnamon bun. Of course. And every spaceship is a piece of heart. Like the Death Star is a, is a waffle iron. Okay. And a Star Destroyer I think is an iron so we essentially I played oh my god I just realized this what's up oh Jesus what my character in Traveler his name was Ben Solo you're fucking kidding me no I've still got the character sheet somewhere oh my god and this is something we created in the 80s you hear that he's coming for you Disney oh Jesus hire your lawyers now oh yeah they need that (laughs) yeah I named my character Ben Solo and I had Chewbacca the Wookiee the Cookie Monster the Wookiee Monster as my as my Mm co-pilot and we had the zoo crew because every character in it was some kind of animal okay and so we were like synthesizing a bunch of different stuff we played Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles before it was a Saturday morning cartoon Okay. And I had never, I probably did this subconsciously, but my character in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was a raccoon. Rocket Raccoon was created in the 70s. And so I probably did that subconsciously. Yeah. But Ben Solo would have been a combination of Han Solo and Ben Kenobi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Gamma World was something we played. Yeah. And I don't think we did a lot of scenarios off of it, a lot of a lot of yeah. campaign off of it because I don't remember the characters. I remember the shit we came up with. Okay. We played Gamma World, a post-apocalyptic game in the Marvel universe. Okay. So you did Marvel Zombies first. No, no, no. We were way past that. Gamma World's far post-apocalypse. Yeah. We found Captain America's shield. Okay. For example. I think you told me that. We found Wolverine's skeleton. Great. And the one that hurts me the most... So we, we tried to extrapolate stuff from what we knew in the 80s mm-hmm. um, into post-apocalyptic. Like, how would a post-apocalyptic world interpret this? Mm-hmm. Except there's we're, we're young. We're like 15. Yeah. So a lot of it's poorly formed. Um, so we found these clerics, and they could resurrect, and they were the clerics of General Electric, the clerics of GE, because at the time, GE's slogan was, we bring good things to life. Oh, man. And that's the kind of inspiration we drew. We would just take something and go, that's okay, great. how does that twist? That's great. But that's how stupid we were. I think you might have actually told me that when I was talking about how uh, the setting for my tabletop is formulated. I think I probably did. Tell me about your tabletop. Uh, so. By the way, the video cuts off 
at half an hour. Okay. So at most we have five minutes. Okay. Well, um, so my tabletop, uh, I, I've been writing a, a tabletop role playing game. It's a, it's percentile. Um, so you need two d ten. That's it. That's all you need to play it. Which is something I haven't found a lot of, other than empowered by the apocalypse. But I'm getting off track. Um, it was originally set in the Fallout universe. It was based off the special, and I, you picked your tag skills, and I wanted to play as a ghoul, so I, I added playable races and, you know, takeaways and bonuses for each of them. You could play as, like, a super mutant and a ghoul or the ones I wrote up. I was thinking about other ones. But as I continued tinkering with it, I realized that I wanted to do more with it. I want to establish it and actually put it out for anybody who wants to play it. So I broke away from the Fallout branding, and I kind of redid some stuff. So tag skills are very different. Um, basically, I have six sets of five skills each. And you can pick one of them, one, one set that you can boost every skill in it by 10, or two sets that you can boost every skill in it by 5. Uh, the objective is to roll under your uh, thing, uh, under your skill level, and that's a, that's a success. A 1 is a critical success. Um, but it is set post apocalyptic, um, and it's a branch off of. A multiverse that I want to create through a lot of different forms of media, mostly off of my rap career. Because uh, shout out Wasteland. <laughs> Explain. Uh, the Wasteland Music Company. It's my rap group. It's uh, currently it is me and my roommate Dylan, uh, who's one of my best friends on the planet, and uh, we are writing a concept album about us causing the apocalypse because we're fed up with all of this. Yeah, I had that conversation with somebody recently. I told them that um, you feel most at home in the post-apocalyptic genre. Mm -hmm. And whereas, and tell me if I've got this wrong, whereas I see that of the, as the loss of everything that we've got and we've established and built up, yeah. you see that as wiping the slate clean mm -hmm. and being a blank slate for building something new. Most definitely. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Uh, so, again, this comes back to the Fallout universe, specifically the good ones, 1, 2, and New Vegas. And of the three, I've played New Vegas. Um, but it's... The apocalypse is not everything's gone. Oh, life is hopeless. It is a chance for us to build infrastructure that is better. It is a chance for us to start over. It's not... I mean, it is destruction, by definition. It has to be. But it's rebirth. It's more than that. You come from the ashes and build something more beautiful out of it. And that's what has always drawn me to the post-apocalypse. Like, sure, it's Wild West frontier -y for a while, but then you can build something. You can create something out of the ideals that survival has brought upon you. <clears throat> and yeah, I mean, that's it. This is basically all I got. Cool. We got to wrap up because we got about a minute fifteen at most before it ends. So, uh, is there anything you want to end add in conclusion? Uh, this definitely wasn't really about your role playing career at all. Yeah, it was. I, I'm still looking for chapter two. We covered chapter two. Barely. We covered the creation of the group that defined most of my role playing career. Okay. It, is the the uh, oh god the hunter campaign gonna make its way? In yeah, there? eventually. Okay, cool. I'll tell you what. I'll do chapter three right now in another video. Okay. Okay. Cool. Say so, good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. Yes, that's my boy. <laughs>